Hey guys, okay, um, I wanted to learn how to do the updated version of Raycasting. Uh, I actually had to relearn it, but there are no video tutorials on it, just the dev hub, so since it's easier for people to learn from a video, sometimes I decided to make one myself, uh, even though this I'm not that good at it and this isn't really a tutorial channel. So I was doing this because when I, I saw the old method being done um, in here, this is from 2019, so it's actually, I guess, this method is pretty new, but here he's trying to teach us how to do pathfinding, um, and here's the old method for those of you who don't know what it is. Usually you would take a ray, you would make a new ray object, you would put in the origin position, also he fixes this later in the video, but it should be my root dot position. You put in that position, then you put in the direction, which is this, and then that gives you a ray object. And then, and then if you wanted to blacklist some of the blacklist or ignore some of the parts in the workspace, then you would find part on ray with ignore list, and you'd do that, and it would re return a tuple or just two param two. It would return two values and put them in here. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that in the normal. Not normal. I guess this is the, just the updated way that Roblox wants you to do. On the dev hub, it says that this is um, outdated now, so I'm going to be showing you how to do that. This is my failed attempts from my last take of this. Uh, now, in this version, if you want to ignore parts, with this with this new version, you can not only ignore parts, you, but you can actually just choose whitelists as well. Um, anyways. You're going to start by creating a raycast params object. So local params equals raycast, raycast params dot new. Um, and this is how you blacklist and whitelist things in, as opposed to doing the workspace find part on ray with ignore list because as you can see, there's it's actually not even really there anymore. I'm pretty sure it still works because Roblox doesn't want to break everyone's games, but yeah. So then, if you then to decide which things you want to um, include in the ignore list, you would put in an array. Anyways, here I have this my little fiery orb. Um, this is our the casting. My goal is to get it to shoot from here to here. So we, yeah, and then I put this part in the same model as it. This is going to be in the ignore list so that it goes through here and does not register this and what it hits with the ray. So, yep, we're going to do that. So in order to do that, you would say that the params dot, and up here we have filter descendants, in de filter descendants instances, uh, you would pick that, and then you'd make an array. So in this case, it would be script dot parent get descendants, and that would return an array, or you could just manually do, you know, that, that workspace dot caster dot that, and, but I don't think people would like that if they had to edit your scripts, because it's kind of messy, so, and also I'm going to define this, sorry. Okay, so that now we have our filter descendants instances, but now we have to tell the script whether we want um, it to ignore those things or if we want it to ignore everything except those things. So to do that, you just do params dot uh, filter type equals enum dot ray cast filter type dot and then you choose blacklist or whitelist. So blacklist would be ignoring them, whitelist would be including them. Uh, yeah, so blacklist since we want to ignore them. Um, then if you want to do, if you have terrain in your game, you might want to learn about this. It just means if you set the, if you set params dot ignore water to true, then then if you're ray casting and it, hit, it hits a water terrain cell, it will not. 
register it, it will just go through. And then also collision group. If you know what, if you know how collision groups work, you you probably already know how that works. Otherwise, uh, you don't have to worry about it at all um, because your game has no collision groups. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. So now that we have that, um, just to I'm just gonna wrap this in a function just to kind of match what it says, does here. Okay. Okay. Now what we would do is we would say local result because now it actually returns an object which is the raycast result um, instead of return just returning a couple arguments like hit and position. Uh, kind of like the way user input works, it returns the input object. Yeah, so local result equals workspace raycast. Okay, and this does not create a ray object. This just raycasts instead of the old way. It takes the origin, which would be caster dot position, and then it takes a direction, which we're gonna take all of this, um, this math here, which I I'll explain what I understand, but I don't understand all of it. Be I yeah. So we take. We take the target's position. Okay, we take the target dot position, and then we subtract our own position, which would be the caster that position, um, and then we hit we go dot unit, and then we multiply that by whatever we want the length of the ray to be and in we'll just say 100 I guess okay so this takes the vector of the target position subtracts it from that which and that gets a direction I'm not entirely how sure how the length of that position works of that vector works I think it might be the distance from the origin which would be 0 0 0 that is whatever this is so um, but instead of doing that we take the unit we use dot unit which which takes these things okay sorry <laughs> okay it takes these things and then it turns it into a vector of one so that that would look like something like this vector three dot new one zero zero okay that would be a x1, I don't know. This would be up, right? This would be an up direction and of one. This would be a sort of diagonal direction. Not sure exactly. 5, 0 0.5, 1, 0. Okay, basically all of them would just add up to one or else it's multiply. I don't remember. Um, I'm pretty sure it's add. And then you just multiply that by whatever you want the length of the ray to be. It will not register anything beyond beyond this. So this is 100 studs, right? If you're trying to hit something that's 200 studs away, it will not register that because it only got 100 studs away. Okay. So the result takes the... The result has many properties. It has the instance, the position, the material, and the normal. So if you wanted to get the instance that it hit, you'd say something like... Um, hit instance equals result dot instance <laughs> local hit instance equals result dot instance okay and then you'd print that we'll just do that for now <sighs> oh but before that we do that actually we should do this because just in case it does if it doesn't hit anything then it won't return a raycast result. So we don't want it to error. Okay, looks like, uh, it, oh, whoops. <laughs> uh, 
I was surprised why it said hit nothing. Oh, <laughs> I just forgot to even call the function. So, well, to do. Okay, so it's actually hitting this, which means we did something wrong. Oh, I think I know what it is. We actually didn't even, we didn't actually plug our Raycast params in there. So, um, so yeah, it takes it takes these this as the third argument. So that time it actually was not ignoring. It was not ignoring this wall because I forgot to tell it to by putting in our instructions from earlier. So now it's hitting this one, and if we move that, it'll hit the red one. If we move that, it'll hit the white one. If we move that, it'll hit the target. So that's cool, right? Uh, it also returns a material. So um, now instead of doing this, we'll just do print result dot material and we'll change the materials of all these okay this material is now concrete this material is now marble this material is now neon okay and this material will be corroded metal all right as you can see it just will print that marble neon and now I will print corroded metal because that's what it hit and the another really important one is the position right result dot position it will just print the, the position that it hit and as you can see this one up because it changed that um, here we have my little pathfinding guy. All right. Uh, now we have the normal, which is important for those of you who probably don't even need this video. Uh, it just basically takes the faces, not the faces, it takes the directions of everything. So if we rotate this at all, this will change. basically saying um, here we have Z fighting sorry uh, we have it's basically saying which side which part of this it's hitting so like as we, you can see if we change this to be perfectly oriented oh which it is huh Okay, well, up here it said zero, zero, 001, right? And that's because it was hitting the Z side of it. See, blue is Z, as we can see. Yeah, we can't actually see that right now, but... See, blue represents the Z axis, red is the X axis, and Y is the green axis, because it's up, and this is actually the front, right? As you can see, this is X, Y, Z, right? It's hitting the positive Z, which means that this arrow would be positive. This is the negative one. So that means that if we rotate this 180 degrees, it would probably say something like 100, zero, zero, but it doesn't. <laughs> okay. Yep, that's it for this video, I think. Um, I'm not really trying to grow this channel or anything, so feel free to do whatever you want. But I would actually like a comment, so...